Hey everyone, I'm Jim Classic, and you are watching Geekin' It. So, for today's review, I will be talking about Transformers, Titans Returns, Voyager Class Broadside, and Blunderbuss Partner. Broadside is an Autobot triple changer, uh, dating all the way back to the G1 era. And for Titans Return, he got the Headmaster's treatment. He's part of Wave 4, or, well, maybe Wave 5. Uh, I am drawing a blank on that at the moment, but um, I believe as part of the Wave 4 or Wave 5 series in New Jersey, he was virtually impossible to find, and now he is everywhere. Uh, he's all over the shelves now. He was only like, what, three months behind the rest of the country, so, but whatever. He's here now, and I have him. So, here is Blunderbuss. He is the Titan Master partner to Broadside. Um, he is, I guess, not bad. I mean, he's red, he's gray, he's tiny, he's got little arms, he's got a moving head. And, you know, that's pretty much it. I mean, he's, he's no better or worse than any of the other Titan Masters of the size. You know, it's just he's a little guy who transforms into the head. So, yeah, uh, let's continue on and review this Titanic Autobot. You'll see what I did there in just a minute. So the Titan Master Blunderbuss does fold into Broadside's head, boom, and then he docks onto the giant robot known as Broadside. Ooh. So when it comes to Broadside, I'm kind of making a special case in reviewing the robot mode first. Because he is a triple changer, Broadside has always been a triple changer from, from G1, and he's kind of got a strange uh, uh, dual mode. So I figured the robot mode will be the easiest to do first, and then, you know, go on to the others. So yeah, the robot mode is epic. I mean, this is one big, badass, burly bot. Boyo. He's got these cool, asymmetrical shoulders with the, the missile pods on the right shoulder, and like, this, this graded detail here on the left, which, you know, you'll see what that is in vehicle mode. Um, he's got the cool flip-out dealies right here behind the elbows, which kind of give him a cool look. He's got these really cool shin guards right here that point out, which act as fins. Big punchy fists, and overall, I am digging this robot mode. I mean, this is, this is truly an Autobot bruiser right here, and they've, they've done a great job capturing Broadside's robot mode. I, I think it's just fantastic. I love the details. You know, I, I love all the intricate, like, grates and panels and stuff that are just all around him. And, and even the head sculpt looks pretty cool. I mean, you know, a lot of the Titan Masters do have that blocky head thing going on for them, but it just looks good on him. And even with the, even with the head, it's got the flip-up things like all the Voyagers do. Uh, you press a little button right here on his belly, and it pops up and it fills out his head pretty well. This is one of the few times which, in my opinion, it works. And also, if you will direct your attention to this, we also have Broadside's collector's card, which is pretty cool artwork of um, Blunderbuss docking onto his neck. And it's, you know, it's pretty cool artwork. I mean, it's also kind of disappointing that he's just standing there, but a lot of the Titans Returns cards have the characters just standing there. I, I personally prefer action poses, but that's just me. Now, moving on to the broad chest of Broadside, we do see a little Autobot sticker. I'm not really a fan of stickers. I mean, they peel, they fade, they just usually don't age well with time. But, I mean, really, uh, in this robot mode, you really only see the Autobot sticker. Maybe a few things there on the, on the heels, but, you know, it, it's... It's something I can forgive if it's just the Autobot sticker. <laughs> For Broadside's weapons, he is armed with a, um, a clear blue Energon rifle with, um, with the seat built in so a Titan Master can sit in and, and, and pilot it as a turret. And this is the only weapon that Broadside has, which I am not a big fan of this weapon. First off, uh, I, it's an Energon weapon. It's an Energon rifle, and, you know, 
I, I don't know. I, I just... I, I just don't think this says broadside. And now, I never owned the original G1 broadside toy, but I'm pretty sure the original broadside also came with a battle axe. And other than Galvatron, um, I think this is the only other Voyager class Titan Master, or, or Titan Voyager, or whatever he is, to only have a single weapon. And I, I, I just don't like it. I, I just do not like this gun, I'm sorry. So, anyway, let's move on to vehicle mode number one. An aircraft carrier is kind of a rare thing in regards to a Transformers alt mode. I can think of only two others. Generation 1 Micromaster Flattop and Transformers Armada Tidal Wave. Also Transformers Energon Tidal Wave too. Same guy, same mold, just different paint deco. But so maybe that counts as four. I don't really know, but still you can count all the aircraft carrier transformers on one hand. So it's still kind of a rare thing. And from most angles um, this is a pretty convincing warship. Uh, I mean, you know, an aircraft carrier is kind of simple, you know, in most regards. Um, you know, very minimalist, I guess you could say. But I, I don't know, I, I think this works for broadside. The flat top has all sorts of nicely sculpted details, like these little slots and the hull plating and, ugh, more stickers. Oh, we're back to this again. I would rather see paint applications as opposed to the stickers. I mean, the, they, they, the, this one already here on the flat top is already starting to crinkle, and, um, and they applied the sticker over top of molded detail. So that's, that's just lazy and cheap on Hasbro's part. I'm sorry. I gotta take points off of that. That just, the the laziness and the cheapness right there on the stickers on the runway. It, it's just no, that's just not cool. And really, it, it, it gets on my nerves. I you, you know you spend a lot of money on some of these guys. You get some cheap sticker applications, and the retail stores are upping the price. And I, I just I feel like you're not getting as much as your money's worth. And yeah, okay, I'm gonna move on to something else. Like most Titan Returns vehicles, they all have the little pegs that um, are scattered throughout the flat top, and, and of course others as well. So you get Blunderbuss, and you kind of just peg him there, and you know, standing on the flat top there, he just looks like this giant, massive robot just walking around on the aircraft carrier. And um, you know, it looks pretty cool. You can put other Titan Masters here, of course, and um, another cool feature with these pegs that Hasbro did not have to do and I suspect they did this in lieu of his battle axe if you look at the flat top if you take a good gander you're gonna see five little white plastic jets that are attached to the pegs they can be removed they can be switched around those are the five aerial bots okay those little tiny jet pieces there those are the five aerial bots that transform into Superion which this gives you a good idea of how big Broadside is supposed to be. I mean, this guy is like Fortress Maximus type size, okay? Uh, I mean, really cool touch. I, I still kind of wish he came with a battle axe, but this was a cool touch. The command tower on the starboard side looks really nice with its tiny railings and windows, and it has all sorts of cool little details and stuff. Now. With a lot of Titans Returns figures, the Titan Master somehow integrates into the vehicle mode. Like he sits in a cockpit or driver's side. So where does Blunderbuss go in carrier mode? Well, the answer is simple. You fold down the communications tower, you flip it up, and then you sit his butt down in the command tower, and he just kind of sits there like he owns the frickin' place. I mean, how weird is that? Of course, 
Uh, there are some undocumented things that you could do with the Titan Master and integrating him into the aircraft carry mode. You could just flip him down, transform him into head mode, have the head facing inward, like so, close up the command tower halfway, and you kind of have a loose-fitting super tower. It increases the size of the tower by, like, double, and, um, you know what, that doesn't look awful. I mean, it, it does take a little bit of imagination to accept, but it, it doesn't look bad. Of course, you know, for giggles here, if you really want to just have a good laugh, just have him in head mode facing out, and then his giant noggin is the command tower. Which it's silly, it's doofy, it might even be a little bit charming. It kind of works on a, on a maybe a surreal level. So, there you have it. Primus bless you, Blunderbuss. Primus bless your little spark. He does have a few ports available to mount the Energon rifle. You can mount it right here in the middle of the aircraft carrier, which... Why? That's just stupid. The planes would not be able to take off or land with this thing, uh, you know, uh, rotating back and forth and shooting things. So this is this is really stupid. Or you could fit the gun underneath the panel right here, and um, it, it it just looks equally bad. I mean, overall, as I said, I do not like this gun. And that's the end of that. It's it just it, I I just hate the gun. I'm sorry. Now another thing for our broadside here, he does have kind of like three landing gears right here and right down there. So broadside. So broadside does have three landing skids, and it's more for display purposes. It's so that when you put the toy down, he's not falling over one way. He's standing on a tripod. And also, this little front landing gear might look a little bit familiar because it's this same piece on Alpha Trion. That's right. Alpha Trion, or at least half of Alpha Trion, is Broadside's mold, ma mold mate. Woo! Is his mold mate. It's from the legs down uh, that we have um, you know, Alpha Trion's legs, basically. The feet, the legs, all except for the fins and stuff, but, you know, yeah. So half of Alpha Trion. Okay, not too bad. I, you know, I like how they just kind of reuse that design. Okay, so the landing skids, display skids, whatever you want to call them, it works. It works well enough. Okay. Uh, Broadside has a semi-convincing aircraft carrier, at least from the top angles. From the side, it kind of starts to fall apart from the back, and if you look underneath, just don't look underneath. You're going to see a lot of robot and jet kibble. Oh, wait, did I just spoil it for you? Still not looking any better. This does not look like a fighter jet. I, I, I mean, it's like, it's like half jet and then half disaster. I, I, I mean, th this, this, this mode is, 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 is the product of, of just pure ineptitude. I mean... I, I cannot believe that this was okayed by Hasbro's. I mean, this is worse. This is more embarrassing than Sentinel Prime's train mode, okay? This is... It, it, just, it just looks ridiculous. It looks half-formed. But it, it, it just... I, I, I just cannot accept this level of just sheer laziness on Hasbro's part. I mean, 
maybe their design team couldn't figure out how to do robot, aircraft carrier, jet. Fine. You know, I, I can't imagine that being easy, but I think they could have done a better job than this. To its credit, to what little credit I have for this thing, there is a mounting peg down here for display stands, just like the Deluxes and the Legends class figures. I, I didn't realize that the Voyagers also had those mounting pegs. I'm going to have to go back to my previous figures and see which ones also have it. That was kind of a cool thing which I was not expecting. But, okay, I mean, <clears throat> alright, let's, let's, let's try and look at this thing with a critical eye. I don't know how. So the Energon gun is mounted to the top of the plane. Blunderbuss is sitting inside the cockpit, which, you know, the cockpit works, it folds up. It folds up, he fits in. Okay, that, that works fine. I kind of like the, the clear blue Energon wings with the stickers. I actually kind of like the way the stickers look on this. And I think that's all the nice things I can say about this. I, this is, that's it. That's, I got everything else is just, what were they thinking? And, uh, fun fact, Broadside is not only afraid of heights, but he is also afraid that his armor will rust in water. So there's that. You see, the irony, the huge irony of Broadside here is that he's supposed to transform from a, a large Autobot to a 400-foot aircraft carrier uh, and then mass shift back down into a jet. So with, with Broadside, it's all mass shifting, all right? And, you know, it, it's just... I, I don't know. With with this toy, with this toy, it just, I don't buy it. I've always kind of accepted the point of mass shifting when it came to, like, Megatron. 30-foot robot to a gun. You know, Soundwave. 30-foot robot to a cassette tape player. Okay? In Broadside's case, we go from 30-foot robot to something the size of the Enterprise. And that kind of takes me out of that suspense of disbelief. Like, I just don't buy that. Really, really, Broadside should probably be about the size of Fortress Maximus, if you really think about it. This, I mean, that might be impractical for this toy because, you know, those Titan-class figures are kind of rare and expensive. Fine. But, really, Broadside should be bigger. This toy should be, like, a leader class figure, or, you know, what would be nice, a Titan class figure. I would love to see that of Broadside, because then the aircraft carrier could be more realistic, and the jet mode could be improved upon, and also with the jet mode, I personally just viewed it as a large jet, you know, as really, like, he was more of a, um, a spaceship mode that looked like a jet. That's how I kind of view Broadside here, okay? You know, he's a, he's like a giant who's like towers over everyone and has a starship mode, which looks like a jet, and has an aircraft carrier mode, which looks like an aircraft carrier. But, you know, him being a Voyager size, I mean, he is cool. He is a fun figure. But he's just too small... And that jet mode. Woo! This leads me to a few questions. Where am I going to put this guy in my collection? Okay? Do I do I put him with my other Voyagers and Optimus and Springer and others? Or do I put him with my Legends class figures where he'll tower over them? And here is a little undocumented feature, which um, I didn't discover, but I saw it on someone else do it on the website. Um, we have a helicarrier mode right here, which is kind of cool. It's just a little hybrid of both his jet and carrier mode, and uh, I actually think I like this better than his jet mode. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's kind of cool. If I were to assign Broadside here a letter grade, I would give him a C. Um, where his carrier is passable, his robot mode is amazing, his jet mode is a total failure. Coupled with the fact he only has one weapon and no battle axe, and his stickers are dodgy 
at best. Uh, I think a C is the best I can do for this guy. Also, if you factor in the price of this toy, I paid about $30 for this toy in retail at Target. And if you consider the fact that these toys are being sold generally for $25, and realistically, they're only worth about $15, I can promise you, this toy is not worth $30. You know, Broadside is supposed to be a triple changer. Robot, aircraft carrier, and jet. And what we have here is a two and a quarter changer. I'm Jim Classic, and you've been watching Geekin' It.